In this video I want to talk about skills that nobody teaches, but they really make you a professional developer. And actually you can't find this knowledge in books or videos, and a lot of students are constantly asking me for exactly these questions. And the question that I'm getting a lot is how to make a better architecture, or can I make a video how to implement a better architecture. And the main problem is there are no videos or books with good architecture. Yes, you can find books about programming patterns, how you write code, but you can't really find books about good architecture. Because essentially the skill of writing good architecture comes with a lot of years of experience. But the most important point here, you must keep in mind it and you must always try to master it. Which actually means every single feature that you implement, you try to implement with better architecture. It won't be easy at the beginning, but this is a goal, because essentially you want to make every single solution that you implement really suitable to your needs, enough to be scalable with maintaining a good performance. Only after you worked with 5, 10 or 20 different projects with different architectures, and you try to understand and improve architecture in every single of them, only then you will understand how to plan your architecture for the project better than before. Another important skill that is difficult to change later is your field of expertise. And I'm talking here about complete environment where you're working. For example, if we're talking about web development or maybe front-end development, you typically work with JavaScript, some front-end framework, maybe an API on the backend. This is your field and expertise. And actually it can be really huge. You must master HTML, CSS, some frameworks, understand different patterns of JavaScript, how different solutions are working, like for example Watchers, Publish Subscribe, or maybe Virtual DOM, or single flow of data inside your state management system, like for example Redux. This is your field of expertise. You can't really learn it from the book or in one video. This is super lots of knowledge that you will learn only after hours and hours of working experience. And this is why you don't see a lot of people who are changing their field of expertise. Yes, you can switch, for example, from web development to mobile, or maybe you're programming robots now. The main problem is that field of expertise will be changed almost completely. And yes, sure, some patterns will stay the same, but you will need to learn quite a lot of new stuff inside the new field. It is not just learning a language and a framework, it is learning the new solutions, tools, and how to solve them and debug in the new environment. The next one is really important, but people are not talking about it a lot. And this is the feeling if the code is bad or good. And actually, as a beginner, you can't really understand if the code is good or bad, because you didn't see a lot of code. After some time, you should be focused to get a skill to understand if the code is bad or good. This will help you tremendously to understand if this feature will be scalable enough, performant enough, do you really need to refactor it, or the code is fine as it is. And again here you must keep in mind this skill, because you want to get it. For example, if I see a solution that is difficult to understand, and I can't really grasp what it is doing, in 10 or 15 minutes I start to think that solution might be not that great. If I see some performance problems, or it is really difficult to scale it, then this is for sure the bad code. Which brings us to the next skill, and this is finding the best solution to your specific problem. You can't really get it from some book or video, because you need a countless amount of challenges that you already solved, in order to understand what is the best solution for your problem. Sometimes you should not for example pick a full-blown framework, if you just need a several lines of JavaScript code. Or it might be that you should not refactor code at all, because your project will be finished in two weeks and you should not change anything. Or maybe your solution should not be scalable at all, because you are just using it in a single place, and it won't be used anywhere else. And finding the best solution helps you first of all to work less, because you will implement just a single solution and it will simply works, and secondly you will be much more efficient with your time. The next skill in the list is maintaining good habits, and actually you can start improving your skill here on any level. And I'm talking here about small but really useful habits when you are writing a code. Is your code really clean? Is naming of all your variables is really correct? Did you implement the best possible solution for your current scenario? 
And obviously nowadays we are working with Git every day, which actually means did you implement the feature in additional feature branch or in your main branch? Did you create pull request so somebody can check it? Is it looking clean and tidy? All these questions you must ask yourself every single day. Then after some time you will get more and more habits that will help you to implement your code fast and efficient. And additionally here I want to mention refactor later attitude, and I see it really in a lot of developers. People simply think that they can write the bad code because today's release, or maybe they can't make it on time, and they really think that they will refactor this code next week or in a month, but it never happens. And then this bad code is written in the project like next 10 years, and maybe the whole application is slow just because you spend there not one day but just one hour. This is a really bad attitude that you must try to eliminate. And here is my bonus point here, you must be efficient with your tools. If we are talking about editor for example, do you really know all hotkeys inside your editor or you really spend a lot of time by using your mouse? It is not efficient. Are you efficient with Git if you are using it every day? You must be efficient with your tools, in this case you will be better as a programmer. And actually if you are interested to know what are 5 tips to become a senior developer, make sure to check this video also.